is done, I want to highly recommend that if you can sit over on this area of the room, you'll be able to see her as she speaks, as well as she goes and provides more information into her um, demonstration today. Um, as you can see, the podium is slightly turned, a filter this way to make sure that everybody can see what we need to. So I highly recommend if you can sit in the center or sit in the um, uh, left side of the auditorium if possible. There will be questions after her discussion and I will be happy to run around and provide the microphone so everybody can hear your questions as you like them. We look forward to being able to uh, have you in this class and this workshop and listening to our incredible speakers. Thank you very much. We'll get started in just a moment. I'm short, so I'm going to bring this in. Sorry, yeah. I had to move it down a little bit because I'm short. Okay. okay. Hi, everybody. My name is Nanny Curtin. Um, I am, it is my honor and pleasure to introduce our speaker for today. Um, Julie and I have been friends for about 20 years or so. We belong to the same film club. We were in the same art group, very small art group for a while. And um, I kind of know the progression in her art and it's been Wonderful to see, and it's I'm so proud of Julia. Um, so Julia is a native Tucsonan. She is a uh, Mayo and Mescalero Apache um, Native American, and she is she was a curator at the Arizona Historical Society for many years. How long did you do that, Julia? Twenty one years. Twenty one years. She was so history is very important important to her. Um, she has her BFA and MFA in sculpture and metals from the University of Arizona. She also has a master's in landscape architecture. And um, this might embarrass her, but she has a fabulous singing voice. And she was in a group. What was the name of the group you were in? I was in Moxie. I was in um... Tucson Desert, sing Harmony. Tucson Desert Harmony and different groups. Moxie. Sweet Adeline, hmm? Sweet Adeline, and Sweet Adeline. She has a great voice. Um, her specializations are 1800s Tucson costume, multicultural, multiculture, uh, historic landscapes, and last week I went to a lecture at the Tucson Museum of Art about this their latest exhibition, it's called Enduring Legacies. And Julia uh, was on the panel. She curated that show with two other people. And um, so they went through 450 pieces of Native American art and chose how many uh, are in the show? Like 40, 60? 60. 60. 60. And it's a wonderful exhibition. So go and see that. I brought a pamphlet from it in case anybody's interested in, in looking at it. Um, I think that's about it. I would like to present Julia Ariola. Thank you, Mimi. And thank you, Bobby Wilson, wherever you're at. Thank you so much for inviting me to uh, come here. I had. Uh, Heard of Paperworks before, and uh, have always wanted to check it out. And now here I get to see all of you right now. So this is good. Um, I do have some pamphlets that are on the table there. Um, I belong to um, Mark Sublet Medicine Man, 
uh, that's my gallery. So I've got some uh, uh, pamphlets there and I've also got a little bit of information about myself. I was asked uh, by Bobby if I could bring some um, examples of my work. And uh, I do not have any ledgers anymore. There are 10 at, um, at Medicine Man right now. And so if you're interested, go to Medicine Man, <laughs> check out those ledgers. Um, so what I do have is, uh, is I, I started drawing some of my characters on um, old checks, 1800s checks. So I've got some sampling of those up here. Have a look at it and you, uh, and, and this is all over if you want. Okay, so uh, next slide, please. So uh, before I get up in here all talking about myself, I think I will just give a brief explanation of what ledger art is. How many people are uh, familiar with ledger art? Oh, that's cool. That's really cool. Because a lot of people aren't. And it has a really, really rich history of its own. And um, we were considered a vanishing race after the Indian Wars. And uh, so the people that were incarcerated in Florida were asked to make drawings of their wife. And um, so it, it was mostly men who were incarcerated there. And uh, so they decided that they would, uh, the, the pictures that, the narratives that they, that they depicted were uh, usually uh, battles and um, different technology that was coming onto the, onto the land, like trains, things like that. And uh, so, um, so they did this, they were given whatever paper was left over, like ledger, whatever, anything and, and so that's what they did their drawings on so, so as you can see these are these are really old I think that Heard has a, a whole big collection of them and I think that show is still on so that'd be kind of interesting to see I made it up there myself but so uh, next slide please so these are contemporary drawings and as you can see they're they're kind of interesting and taking in all the technology and kind of a reverse type thing that is happening on the left hand side. Next slide, please. Okay, so um, my love for a long time has been steampunk. And I love the, the whole uh, industrial revolution type devices that we're having. Steam devices, the whole thing. I loved all of that. I loved the clothes, Victorian, Regent Street, Edwardian. I loved all of those, all those clothes, and uh, the literature and everything that was coming out of the uh, the whole steampunk movement, which started around the nineties, I believe. And um, so I loved it, but uh, that wasn't a real good time to be. Native American either, you know. So, uh, so I had this push and pull that was already going on within myself. So my work would probably have that push and pull as well. So I was, uh, I actually joined the Tucson Steampunk Society for a while and dressed up like, er like everybody dressed up and went to the teas and did all kinds of funny stuff. And uh, I dressed as a scout, an 1800 scout, but I had uh, different uh, uh, things on me that, had, that were more fu futuristic and uh, also the part of the regalia, whatever I wanted to wear. And I actually called myself, uh, let's see, a, a scout from a reservation in a galaxy far, far away. <laughs> So that, that's who I was, and uh, so it was a lot of fun. And then, I don't know, I just, I just got to the point of where I didn't have any more time to really do that because my art was really picking up. So here we go. Next slide, please. Okay, um, this particular painting always got to me. And um, 
And I wasn't sure how it was going to relate to my ledger, but it does. And uh, so this is AKA, AKA Manifest Destiny by Gask, uh, 1872. And as you can see, this is an allegory of Manifest Destiny, this woman that is crossing over and bringing all of this technology with her. She's bringing knowledge, she's bringing uh, telephone lines, she's bringing, all these people are running over these Native Americans and Buffalo. And even there's a bear down there. It's like, you know, hey, what's going on? Uh, so there, it was just a, a, just a takeover. And as you can see, it's from east to west and east is light. And it's like bringing light into the darkness because they considered, you know, the, the savages, all of that kind of stuff. So I just thought this was always, always really super interesting. And uh, so I got a chance to play off of it. Next slide. Next, please. And next. There. So I did reverse manifest destiny. So I have a Hopi maiden who is flying through the air going west to east. And she's bringing rain and corn and all and blessings and all the good things that that that, that she can bring. Um, she has she is a Hopi maiden and she has gears for her quarrels that Hopi maidens use that, uh, that, that, they're, that, that are put on them. Uh, I use all kinds of um, myths and legends and history from all tribes because manifest destiny, destiny affected all tribes. So that, that's why I've got these different people and you'll, you'll see it as we go through. Okay, next one, please. So here's a little information on these, these uh, quarrels that the maiden, the maiden girls uh, have. And um, I don't know where the gear thing came from, but it just, it just occurred to me to use gears. So all of my maidens have gears, all of them, and they were always moving forward very strong. I like that about my maidens. So next one. So here are my first three maidens that I did. This is back in 19. The uh, one on the right, way on the right is uh, kind of that, like the technology and corn and the um, maiden who is right there, front and center. And then uh, the one in the middle, I'm, I'm always, because of the steampunk, I'm interested in airships. So I turned my maidens into going into an, into an airship. Next slide, please. Okay, so here's where I combine the myths and legends. And um, this is Coyote. And Coyote has been amazing in my career, in the, in my ledger career, in that everybody likes Coyote. Um, he is the first to leave from the gallery. There is no, there, people say, oh, we only want Coyote is Coyote at, at Mark's. And uh, no, <laughs> he's never there. He's one of the first to always leave. People just love Coyote. And uh, I had no idea that, that, that he was gonna be so uh, popular. But anyway, the way Coyote's persona started out with me, and that's with the uh, legend or myth of how Coyote, uh, how Coyote stole the stars and placed it. So I'll tell you that story real quick. Um, the creator had just finished creating everything and it was still afternoon. And so creator said, I'm going to wait until nighttime, and then I'm going to place the stars in the sky like fine beads and beautiful rows. 
And so Creator went to sleep and he had his bag of stars right next to him. Coyote came along. Coyote's a dog and so he's always hungry. He saw the bag and he said, wow, I bet you there's some really good food in that bag. He said, so I'm going to see if I can steal that from Creator. So he ran and he ran really fast by Creator and grabbed the bag as he was running. So as he was running, he was looking back to see if Creator had noticed. And he didn't notice that there was a rock in front of him. And so he tripped on the rock. And as he did that, the bag blew open and all the stars just went all over the place. But willy nilly, all over the place. And so then Coyote said, or the creator woke up at that time and, I, and he said, and he looked up and he said, Oh, Coyote, what a mess you've made. I was going to place everything like fine beaded rose and look at this mess you've made. And Coyote felt really bad. And he started to cry. And he looked up and he cried. And so all the descendants of Coyote look up and they cry. So this is this is how Coyote came. And so what he's doing here is that he's in a in a, a laboratory, and that's a 19th century uh, um, telescope. And he just happens to wake up and he looks in there and he sees the stars. And that pretty much started Coyote onto, onto this ledger road for me. And he always wears cowboy boots with stars on them. And stars always follow him everywhere he goes. And you'll see this as we go through these slides. Um, and, the, and the next one is uh, Crow. And, and Coyote discussed how they each stole fire because they did. They each stole fire and they, and they have the, um, it shows because uh, Coyote is now, or uh, Crow is now totally black because it used to be rainbow at one time. And uh, Coyote has little uh, markings for burn marks as well. But they're discussing how they both did it, so. There's a little, it seems like a little bit of attitude with Coyote. <laughs> and then uh, the next one is Kasari. And Kasari is a, a Hopi uh, clown. And I don't know if you all are familiar with that, if you've seen Kasari, but that's him. And he's dressed steampunk. And uh, he also, Kasari is, always has um, watermelon around him for gluttony, kind of mirroring what people do. And uh, so there's always a uh, uh, watermelon around him. So there's seeds coming down and are around him too. And he doesn't know that uh, technology is getting ready to just take him over right there. Next slide. So here is uh, my steampunk bear. And all my bears have the, the uh, peace medal on, the peace medal that was uh, given that Grant gave to chiefs at, during, during the Indian Wars in uh, allegiance, trying to get, get allegiance by the different tribes. So they wore these uh, peace medals. And so my bear always wears a peace medal. And here's another Kasari on one of those big bicycles. And then um, another Kasari with a pith helmet, which is the epitome of colonialism. And he also has a um, watermelon uh, Africa safari shirt with the, with the seeds falling off. Next, next slide, please. So here's the peace medals that were given. And uh, all the chiefs wore them. They wore them proudly. And uh, well, we all know what happened with that. It didn't exactly pan out as we told. Next slide, please. So I did a, a series on crown dancers, which comes out of Mescalero. And I just thought it'd be kind of interesting to uh, put uh, mechanisms on the headdresses. And I just, 
I just really, I, I just really had fun with it. So, they, and they were pretty popular. They weren't really going really slow. Next slide, please. Um, the plague map. That has always intrigued me. And so when the lockdown began to happen, I really started thinking about that plague mass. And I, I guess I just like the, I, well, I remember it from steam closets because some people dressed with those things and I, and I just really liked the idea of flowers being you know, in that little beak so that you can tolerate <laughs> the smell and whatever. And, uh, but anyway, that, I, I started to play with that. And then of course, steampunk did, did a lot with the, with the plague masks. Uh, next slide, please. So these were done during, right away, like, like when the lockdown happened, I just started working on these ledger. And um, the Aki's weren't dancing, they, they weren't, no, no, every, you know, nothing was happening, right? Maybe they were dancing, but we didn't get, we didn't get to see them like we like we like to see them. Um, what I really liked about this time was a social distance powwow that started coming uh, on Facebook, and people were dancing in their regalia in their backyards, things like that. So, so that's where this comes from. Easter will come. We were you know, hoping, and we were also scared during that time. And um, so these are like hope for me. And, uh, but they, the exception of the one on the left, they, uh, they're wearing um, uh, plague masks. Um, next slide. So there's Crow taking precautions. And even uh, my, uh, I have my maidens who are also taking precautions. Those uh, jet packs, those were back. <laughs> Again, my steampunk stuff. And then there's Coyote, there he is in his boots and he's wearing his mask. And um, this is when I was waiting for the vaccination, waiting for my time to be able to take it. So Coyote is waiting for his vaccination right, right outside of Walgreens. <laughs> so next slide, please. So here's more of my maidens. They're wearing a gas masks from uh, first, first World War. And then these maidens, these are the twirling maidens. And this is when things were just starting to change a little bit, but we were all still wearing our masks. So the maidens are enjoying their, their ride. You remember the Tilt-A-Whirl or, so that's, I, I just thought it'd be really cool to put a basket behind it. Cause we used to call them the baskets. I, that's what we used to call them. And the, so I just thought the maidens would look pretty cool. Next slide, please. So uh, carousel horses, that's another thing that goes really quickly as far as my ledger. It's, it's coyote and, um, and my carousel horses. People are just crazy about them. I have always enjoyed carousel, even though I was, I can remember the first time I saw one, I thought it was really cool, but I was also a little bit scared. You know, I was... I don't know, there's something about them that's for me and still is kind of uh, scary and, and fun at the same time. And I, I always felt sorry for the horses because I felt like, okay, they, they just go round and round and they never get to go anywhere. So next slide. So here are my horses. That one's chasing an Indian. Bicycle up there. And free at last. And then uh, Leap of Faith is like, uh, a lot of people really enjoyed this one because it's like the merry-go-round was black and white and this one little pony decided to jump off and all of a sudden it's in color, you know? So, but it, it's, it's hard, it's hard to take that leap, right? You, know, you just never know what's gonna happen. So, next slide. There's some more horses.
once again, the one on the right is a black and white carousel, and then they turn into color. Next slide, please. And this led into my, uh, these are diptychs, double, double ledger. And um, this is actually uh, comes from Navajo myths and the horse that goes across the sky that carries the um, sun spirit or the sun god is, um, he always goes from east to west, of course. And uh, the red horse always signifies uh, some sort of storm that's coming, which in the, during monsoon, we're just really happy to see that happen. You know, just, so, and so that's actually when I did that one. So during months so because uh still waiting for rain we're still ready waiting for rain and uh, walking across the sky the blue one has to do with uh, fair skies and he is carrying the sun god but what i've got him doing is he's going from the hogan on the west which is uh so i got that kind of steampunky there and uh, and he the the horse that goes across during fair weather, for some reason, there's a blanket underneath him. So I just thought that would be really interesting to put that on there too. And he's going to the east, to the Hogan in the east, and that's kind of steep on me too, so. Uh, next slide. So here are my characters. I have res dogs too, and I dress them all up. A uh, good friend of mine bought this at, at uh, a show that I had at, at Medicine Man. And it was interesting because this uh, older woman was looking at it, she's like in her 90s. And she looked at it and she said, she said, you know, she says, I know those guys, I've danced with them. <laughs> <laughs> and I told my friend about that and she, that, that sold it, she bought it. <laughs> I guess she, I guess she had danced with them too, or something. I guess it's something about those narrow hips, or something. Like that. So there's Coyote with his uh, shoes. He's all, he's in front, and uh, one of my other characters is is Madame Crow, and she's a fancy dancer there. Madame Crow has her own story too. She's actually a mechanical engineer, and uh, her research all has to do with corn. So next slide. So here are the uh, drummers. So there's some res dogs and bear. Bear is always head singer. He's wearing his uh, uh, peace medal up there. But all my, all of my creatures are dressed to the nines. They always are. You can be sure of that. Um, and then this next one is failed to launch. And here's a couple of mud heads and Kasari who are trying to get this balloon going. And uh, the Kasari are just all tied up in it. And uh, that one mud head is trying to get things, <laughs> trying to figure out how to, how to uh, work it, get it to work. And then there's this other mud head who's just like asking questions and things like that. I don't know, maybe you've been in that position at some time. But it's like, it's not good. So that, that, was, that was a real fun one for me to do. Next one. And this is White Flame. Um, this actually comes from uh, one time I was up in uh, Pine Top and um, I was at the casino there and I was in the back for some reason, I don't know why, but uh, there was forest back there. And uh, it was just getting ready to rain and there was thunder. And I saw Gon coming through the forest. It was just amazing to see that. They were coming through the forest. They, they were gonna dance at the casino. But I saw, I saw them uh, coming out of the forest. So that's where this one comes from. And it, it's white flame, purest flame you can get. Um, Lost in the Blue Time is actually kind of a self-portrait. And uh, it's, uh, there's the scout. 
surrounded by uh, bears, two bears that are looking in different directions. It's uh, the blue time is that time just before it gets dark. And it's just a real sacred time. And all kinds of things happen during that time. So next one. The warehouse of ideas is a dream that I had. I actually had a dream where I went into a warehouse and there were all these suitcases and uh, one suitcase fell down from way up high and it popped open and a butterfly came out of it. So I had this dream a long, long time ago before I even started doing any ledger. So I decided to put Coyote in there where he finds it. He finds the warehouse of ideas. Uh, Bright Teeth and the Great Bear. This is, I was asked by uh, Raven Makes in uh, Oregon, Raven Makes Gallery in Oregon to um, do some drawings on maps. So they sent me four maps and uh, one of them was this one, this old celestial uh, map. And so I decided to do a, a story on it. And uh, this, this story has to do with um, a bear that kept coming into the village and uh, upsetting everyone, eating food, just, they wanted to stop the bear from doing this. So there were four uh, warriors who decided to go after the bear. My warriors are four mudheads. Um, and they had a little black dog called White Teeth. And so White Teeth is in the middle with, and he is dressed Regency. He's dressed up and so is, so is Bear. So they go after Bear and they keep running and running after Bear until Bear goes up into the, into the sky, into the night sky and Bright Teeth and the four warriors follow all the way up into the sky. And so that makes them the Big Dipper. And the next one is the uh, Zen fry bread. It's Bear just enjoying his fry bread. I don't know if you all know about fry bread, but it's, it's pretty delicious. <laughs> uh, next slide, please. These are new. These are these are two new ledger that that are actually at uh, Sublet right now. So those pesky stars. It's like this is this is a coyote with some attitude. He cannot get away from these stars. They're always there. And uh, and then the other one is waiting for the stars. Uh, next. So I did some I, I did some drawings uh, about Route 66, where the highway was there, and uh, so I thought this was kind of interesting because they're broke down on 66, and it's like three different viewpoints of the same situation. As you see that with the mudheads and coyote, coyotes just looking for probably for another road, uh, another uh, ride to get out of there. And I have Mudhead in diver's suit. That was really popular back in the 1800s to have your uh, portrait done in, in these portrait studios and you know, lean up against something. There's drapery in the back of you, things like that. So I put Mudhead there in one of those uh, uh, bell di diver's suits from, from that time. And as you can see, I don't think that helmet is gonna go over his head. <laughs> But it, it looks cool, and that's what it's all about. <laughs> and, he's, and he's standing on a chief blanket. So in all of these, what I try to do is put that tension, the tension between, um, yes, manifest destiny happened, but at the same time, goods were brought that we wanted. So that's, that's the push and pull. 
that's the push and pull of, of this whole thing. That's why my, my ledgers are the, are the way they are, really. So this is Gallup or Bust. Coyote is got, get, getting a ride to Gallup. This dog with him. Next. And this is my maiden border. My, my maidens are always very positive, very strong, always moving forward. And so she's, uh, she's on a skateboard with her gears. And one of my other um, characters is Badger and he's contemplating a Venetian bat, uh, mask. And uh, the mask is very much like a Kasari, Kasari mask. Next, here's Madame Crow and she's doing one of her lectures. So as you see corn coming down from there, that's her uh, specialty is corn. And here's Madame Crow on her bicycle. Um, she was at tea and she drank a lot of tea. And so she was seen doing tricks on her bicycle on the way home, too much caffeine. And uh, then, and then here's with Carousel. She's riding a carousel horse, and of course, she's getting the ring because she is Madame Crow. Next, um, before I went to school, I, I started school kind of late, college kind of late later. So I worked in factories, and I actually loved working in factories, and. Uh, so these are kind of these two are kind of like my factory uh, drawing uh, drawings. Yeah, uh, this is Badger, Ms. Badger, and uh, she's uh, putting her chocolates in each one of these little one of these little containers very delicately. And uh, the other one is uh, you know I think you know I work I work with women like this. And that's, that's kind of where this came from. I work the night shift, many night shifts, and I, I work with a lot of people just like this, I think. And then here's a Badger. Badger is actually a medicine man and, and a, a storyteller. And he's in his uh, little house with all of his uh, herbs and stuff hanging down. Next. Okay. Uh, so what I've been trying to do is, uh, I like sculpture, I like 3D work. So I was trying to figure out how to um, bring my ledger out into 3D. So I started making these santos, that's what I call them, because they they actually come, the idea actually comes from cage dolls. And um, cage dolls were really, um, they, they started in the church, and they were saints and they had this little cage like dress like thing coming down and what they what they did in the catholic church is they dressed these saints and that's what the, that's what the cage cage doll thing was so i thought i could maybe put my characters into a saint type thing. why not you know <laughs> so i think if you click it it will turn yeah. So you see it just, uh, so these guys are like dressed traditionally and uh, one part is dressed tradi traditionally, the other dress is like uh, Victorian. So it's like Kasari. And so it's, it's kind of neat just to watch them change. Um, and then the mud head over there is dressed uh, traditionally as well and uh, in Victorian, and uh, he is, he's got a uh, carpet bag. Remember carpet baggers? <laughs> so. And Coyote's got his stars on the bottom there. So I think if you click, it's, no, um, just, the regular, just the, the side, just to make it go forward, the, the slide. Yeah, there it is. So this is one of the other 
maps that I did for Raven Makes and it's tearing up the territory on a modified Indian. And uh, he is, he's, he's, and there are his stars, they're still with him. So there it is, any questions? <laughs> Oh, okay. That's a that's another story. Uh, I found I found Ledger at um, me and my me and my partner were in Fredericksburg, Texas, and you know how touristy Fredericksburg, Texas is. So we got off the main drag and we went into a, a thrift store, and it was a big thrift store. And way way in the back, there was a, a room that nothing had been processed. Yet. So it was really dirty, dusty. And of course I wanted to go in there because that's where all the cool <laughs> stuff is. So I went in there and I found the ledger and it's about that thick. Mm -hmm. And it's, let's see, 14 by 10 and a half. It didn't have any binding on it or anything. And it was all really dusty. And I thought, okay, I wasn't doing ledger yet. I had no idea that I was even gonna do ledger. And uh, so I thought, okay, I am willing to go up. I'm, I'm willing to pay 50 for this, no more. You know how you go and you decide you're going to pay this and you're not going to do anything else. And so I went up to the uh, cashier and I said, this doesn't have a price on it. Can you give me a price on it? And she looks at it and she says, oh, I'm going to have to ask the owner. And so, well, here we go. You know. And um, so she made a call and then she uh, came back to me and she said, um, is $10 too much? <laughs> and me and my poker face, I said, you know, that seems very reasonable. <laughs> and uh, so I paid her and I quickly went to the car and put it in <laughs> before anybody changed their mind. Well, I got to tell you that that ledger has turned itself over <laughs> many times and I'm so grateful for that. It's just... It's just been it's just been an amazing, amazing uh, trip that I'm on with this ledger, and and it did happen. It really, really uh, took up steam during the pandemic because well, there was nowhere I can go but I just work and work and work in my studio, and uh, I went to see. Uh, I talked to Mark on the phone and I said, you know, I got this ledger art and told me a little bit about it. He says, well, come in and, and let's look at it. So I went in, I'm all masked up, he's all masked up. We're not getting too close together. And, uh, and he looks at it and he says, wow, he says, I can sell this. And so it's been her story since. And uh, so he, uh, Medicine Man and I have been doing pretty well with these characters who are taking a life of their own. So that's where the ledger came. Yes. How does the texture or the content of the ledger affect the art you create or does it really affect the ledger at all? Um, you mean like what's written on it? Yes. Uh -huh. exactly. Yeah. Uh, you know, in some cases it has an effect and in some cases it doesn't like the maps that really, uh, you know, turn up the territory. That is the Four Corners area in California. And so it was like, that's, that's kind of where that kind of led me to what I was going to do with that. But the other ones, like they've got all kinds of things on them. They've got like uh, the, people buying coffee, people buying all kinds of tools and things like that. So sometimes I look at it and sometimes I don't, and, but I always look at it blurry, you know, like, yeah, this is, this is some cool stuff going beyond, behind this. And I got to say that a lot, a lot of it is just serendipity, it just happens. Mm -hmm. Yes, ma'am. Did you know about Ledger Art? I did. I did. Uh, yeah, I remember it from uh, art history and things like that. And uh, mm -hmm. 
I knew I knew about the history of it, but I just never I didn't think I was gonna do it. No, I just but I just love this paper. You know, I said I'm gonna use I don't know what I'm gonna do with this paper, but I gotta have it. So I <laughs> so I took it. Yes, sir. Oh media oh colored pencil and ink uh -huh. occasionally uh watercolor for like really with you know the brushes with with two hairs on them i might use that for for whiskers or whatever do you have a i'm sorry Oh, they love it. Yeah, yeah, I have um, my friend up in Winslow, uh, Marlo, Marlo Katomi, I don't know if people are, he's a really good weaver. And uh, Marlo's crazy about my work. And he's like, he says, he says, you know, he says, I think I'm gonna have to start collecting you because <laughs> you're the only one that's doing this. Yeah, this, this whole steampunk type thing. And uh, I'm like, wow, that's a nice compliment. So yeah, yeah, most, of, yeah, they all really like them. It's different. <laughs> yes, ma'am. The work brings so much together in uh, different ages, different styles, different cultures. Um, uh, attitudes and it integrates it and you're consistent your work just makes me think on a slider show last year and I talked with you a little bit and I immediately went out and bought some really good colored pencils <laughs> and sit there did you get the oil base because the oil base is like butter. Yeah. Your work is just so challenging. Thank you. To keep, you know, you, I look around and I see another thing. I'm glad that you explained so many other aspects of it. They have no idea about it, but one has that at least. And it's like, Thank you. But what I really like about this is that you and you hit it is that uh, it's all ages love this. Um, my partner's grandkids, they're like uh, eight and 11, and they just love coyote. They love all these, they're waiting for the next drawing to come out. And then I got people way over on the other end of the spectrum who are like, oh, love this, got to have this. And so, and, and everyone in between. And, and I just love that, that it, that it takes over so many, it goes over so many generations. And one of the things that I really like about this work is that, yeah, I have a story. But people come to it and they bring their own story and they flesh it out. And I love that. I love that it just keeps going that way. Thank you. I'm curious if you have to treat your um, paper with anything before you start working on it, since some of it appears to be pretty old. And you yeah, it. it's um, the ledger is actually more linen than anything, and, and yeah, it's I I just dust it off and uh, work from there. And you know it's interesting because this paper was never meant for that. You know, it was never meant for for artwork to be. On it. So it's interesting to see how long things will last. But it is from 1869, and it's still it's still hanging in there. So we'll see what happens with my work. <laughs> yes, ma'am. Uh, the diptychs are are actually two pages that are that are 
combine, they're together, uh, like the book. And uh, the other ones are naturally, they just have fallen off. So those are the singles. And my partner does my cleaning. <laughs> <laughs> and she does a really good job. So I'm grateful for that. What tradition are the mudheads from? Hopi. Hopi. Uh -huh. Yep. Hopi is a symbol of? Well, fun as well. And uh, they, at, at the ceremonies, you'll see them like interacting with the uh, uh, audience a lot, like in between when things are happening, when ceremonies are happening. And in between ceremonies, they'll just be kind of like, you know, or Wilbur and Wilma, they're like right in, in with the crowd, keeping things going in that way. They're fun. They're sacred too. They're all sacred. Yeah. Yes, ma'am. This has been really fun things like to hear your story and see the work. It's just, it's just marvelous. Thank um, you. Stay tuned. Yeah. <laughs> they keep yeah. coming. <laughs> They were meant to be used with ink um, and erasable with a little uh, scalpel looking tool called an eraser knife. Mm -hmm. I think quite often they were glazed in such a way that sized them um, differently than linen paper that would have been used for printing or something like that. Interesting. Yeah. yeah. So I think that makes that makes sense. Yeah. That is really marvelous to work on. Well, the way I do it is that because I don't want to erase a lot. Um, I do the drawings on uh, on trace and then I transfer that onto the ledger itself, just the big shapes. And then from and then I ink in and then I go in and do all the details. And it, as you can see, I'm very detail oriented. So it's a lot of work, but it's so much fun. I just get lost in it. I get lost in the story. Mm -hmm. Yes, ma'am. What type of colored pencils are you using? What brand? Oh, you're going to go out and get some? <laughs> <laughs> colored pencils that have that. The butter. They're, they're, they are oil based, and they're, what I use is a polychrome. That's what it's called. Uh -huh. People try to give me pencils for Christmas and things like that. <laughs> and it's like, no. <laughs> no, and it's like, but thankfully it's through Amazon, so I can switch them out. You know that that gift thing that they do. So I switch them <laughs> out, and, and then I tell people, I said, "Well, this is this is what I use. If you have to get me pencils, you know? <laughs> but anyway, yeah, I'm grateful that people give me that kind of stuff. I have a big pencil box. It's about this big. And I got tons of pencils and pens and. People just come and they, whenever I have studio visits, they just kind of stare at my big pencil box. It's like, it's like your kids, you know, here yes. I've got my pencil box right here. Okay, is that it? Anybody else? You are wonderful. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. This was great. And um, please come up and come up and have a look. Yeah, have a look. She has some of her work there. Mm -hmm. um, we hope to see you all next month and uh, do your spooling around. Take a look at these tables before you go and make a friend. Oh, and turn in your survey, please, if you haven't. So please turn in the survey. So thank you very much. It was a great meeting. Bye. <laughs>